are these miserable persons? said the great goblin. Dwarves and this, said one of the drivers, pulling at Bilbo's chain so that he fell forward onto his knees. We found them sheltering in our front porch. What do you mean by it? said the great goblin, turning to Thorin. Murderers and friends of elves. What have you got to say? Thorin the dwarf, at your service, he replied. We sheltered from a storm in what seemed a convenient cave. Nothing was further from our thoughts than inconveniencing goblins in any way whatsoever. Hmm, said the great goblin. So you say. What are you doing in the mountains? Where are you going to? Thorin Oakenshield, I know too much about your folk already. Let's have the truth or I will prepare something particularly uncomfortable for you. We are on a journey to uh, visit our relatives who live on the east side of these truly hospitable mountains, said Thorin. He is a liar, a tremendous one, said one of the drivers. Several of our people were struck by lightning in the cave. They are as dead as stones. Also, he has not explained this. He held out the sword which Thorin had worn, the sword which came from the troll's lair. The great goblin gave a truly awful howl of rage when he looked at it, and all his soldiers gnashed their teeth, clashed their shields, and stamped. Murderers and elf friends, the great goblin shouted, slash them, beat them, gnash them, take them away to dark halls full of snakes, and never let them see the light again. With a scream, he rushed at Thorin. Just at that moment, all the lights in the cavern went out, and the great fire went off, poof, into a tower of blue glowing smoke, right up to the roof, scattering piercing white sparks all among the goblins. Oh, the yells and yammering, croaking, gibbering and jabbering, howls, growls and curses, shrieking and striking that followed. Suddenly, a sword flashed in its own light. Bilbo saw it go right through the great goblin. He fell dead, and the goblin soldiers fled before the sword, shrieking into the darkness. Follow me quick, said a voice, fierce and quiet. Before they understood what was happening, they were trotting along again with Bilbo at the end of the line. A pale light was leading them. Quicker, quicker, said the boys. The torches will soon be relit. Then Gandalf lit up his wand. Of course it was Gandalf. But just then they were too busy to ask how he got there. He took out his sword again, and again it flashed in the dark by itself. It burned with a rage that made it gleam if goblins were about. Now it was as bright as blue flame for delight in the killing of the great lord of the cave. It made no trouble whatever of cutting through the goblin chains and setting all the prisoners free as quickly as possible. Are we all here? said he. Let me see. Yes, yes, yes. But where's Mr. Baggins? Ah, here's Mr. Baggins. Fourteen. Well, well. It might be worse, and then again it might be a good deal better. No ponies, and no food, and no knowing quite where we are, and hordes of angry goblins just behind. On we go. To make it here, even the flap of the goblin feet, many, many feet, which seemed only just round the last corner, the blink of red torches could be seen behind them in the tunnel. Gandalf fell behind, and Thorin with him. They turned a sharp corner. About turn, he shouted. Draw your sword, Thorin. There was nothing else to be done, and the goblins did not like it. 
they came scurrying round the corner in full cry and found goblin cleaver and foe hammer shining cold and bright in their astonished eyes. The ones in front dropped their torches and gave one yell before they were killed. The ones behind yelled still more and leapt back, knocking over those that were running after them. Biter and beater, they shrieked, running for their lives. On went the dwarves again, a long way on, but the goblins put out their torches and slipped on soft shoes, and their fastest runners with the sharpest ears and eyes ran forward, swift as weasels in the dark, and with hardly any more noise than the others. Quite suddenly, Dory, now at the back again carrying Bilbo, was grabbed from behind in the dark. He shouted and fell and the hobbit rolled off his shoulders into the blackness, bumped his head on hard rock, and remembered nothing more.